Hello, welcome to the Visible and Invisible, dear audience. This is our third interview, uh, trying to relate the Bulgarian and non-Bulgarian world. I'm absolutely delighted to have as a interviewee Anthony Girgiev, who I should say is one of the inspirations for us. Because what he, has, what he has been doing for most of his professional life is precisely this. Uh, try as hard as he can to uh, bring the Bulgarian world to the outside world and to some extent also bring the, the outside world to Bulgaria. Welcome to Visible and Invisible, Anthony. Thank you. you. Thank you very much for, for, for being with us. My uh, pleasure. Uh, just, just to start by saying that we, we, we have announced you as a uh, journalist, photographer, and publisher. But at some point, probably a bit too late in our preparation, I thought that one word would have been enough. Storyteller. Would you, would you, would you have agreed with that? I never thought about this myself, actually, but now you mention it. Uh, probably this is what I've been doing, you know, for the past 30, 35 years of my life. Telling stories either with words or with, with images. With images, yes. Or, well, I'm, I'm, I'm uh, very glad. So basically, this is for, for, for um, our team. We, we need to be presenting in, in the spreading out of this interview uh, Anthony is, is a storyteller, and uh, I hope we will have the time for you to share to share with us your your plans for stories in the future or the stories you have in your in 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 your mind. Um, now let's let's just as a as a brief introduction. Sorry, yes, Anthony. Now I'm thinking about. Now I'm thinking about it. There is a lovely Swiss word about what I'm doing, which is it's a Swiss Italian. What is the word? Called a Swiss Italian word called scalo. Now, scalo probably you wouldn't know, probably very few people would know about that. So let me explain within 30 seconds. Go ahead. You know, when they were building the famous railways in Switzerland, which happened at the end of the 19th and beginning of the 20th century, it was mostly Italians who had to do the, the, the hard work up in the mountains. And because it was very difficult for them to transport the actual rails, they made little, little houses, little sort of outhouses where they stored their, uh, their tools. And from one, one team brought their tools, left it in this little house, and then on the other day, another team came to that house, took the tools, and brought them on and on and on. That means a relaying. So, right. So that little is hello. So this is what I'm trying to do. I'm taking could, could information. I, could I note the word because I, I, it's, it, the, the sound is not terribly good, so I can't capture the word. Scal scalo? Oh, yes, S-C-A-L-O. Right, so scalo, yes. Okay. Well, that, but, that was a so what, what would it be? You would be a scalo. Okay, <laughs> all right. All right, we'll see how we will... Translate this into into a simple sentence. Um, now, coming back to to your life, um, as far as we all know, you you left Bulgaria quite late with respect to the transformation or the the, the abandonment of communism. You you left Bulgaria, I think, as late as eighty nine. Yeah, early early nineteen twenty. Well, yes, early, I mean, before, before the collapse, before you knew that communism is collapsing, basically. And no, but communism was collapsing at that time. Say that again? Nobody imagined communism. Yes, communism yes, yes, until, until, no, but, well, yes, yes, but obviously in Bulgaria, and I think until, until late November, maybe until <laughs> late 1990, no one, you're you absolutely right, but... Um, basically, just to narrate your story, which many people might not know, um, let let us let us show your your picture in um, in Copenhagen. So you you through East Berlin, 
you 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 found yourself in Denmark. If if I understood correctly, you had friends there, and you spent a good six seven years as a journalist in Denmark. Yeah. And I, I'm very curious because you you we've we've spoken about it, but in in the way in your resume, let's say, or the way you describe your life, you you say that you were forced to leave Bulgaria. Could you tell us what forced you to leave Bulgaria? Well, to put it in a very simple way, I mean, I really, I don't think there is time to go into the details, but to put it in a very simple way, I was, uh, the regime at the time did not like me, let me put it that way. And uh, that's why I suddenly found myself with no choice than to than to leave. Okay. Which is what I did. And, uh, which is what I did, and I was uh, I was lucky enough uh, to have applied successfully for a job uh, in London. So uh, very soon after I came to Denmark, I went to London. I started work for the BBC, the Bulgarian section of the BBC World Service, which was way back in uh, 1989, 1990. And then I started work for Radio Free Europe in Munich. Now you see some pictures here, which are mixed because what you see now is now this BBC is this is a picture now. at the BBC, and and, okay, and 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 if I'm if I'm correct, this should be uh, wait a minute, this should be the picture in Copenhagen. Okay, yeah, yeah, that's correct. And I've been a journalist to the 1990s. I came back to Bulgaria in 2002. It was initially. This is where. Uh, this is where. This is my. This is. This was precisely my next question. This is where you come back, as editor of Playboy, and this yeah. is this is one of your pictures which you really look happy. So, just in a few words, how did you come back to Bulgaria? Obviously, uh, working as a Playboy editor made you happy, but also probably the fact that you had come back to Bulgaria or whichever of these. Well, both of them actually. Uh, Bulgaria, to start off with my personal story, is that I, I got an offer that I couldn't refuse, basically. It was a very good job offer. Uh, I could hardly imagine that I would ever be the editor in chief of, 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 of a magazine like Playboy, the Bulgarian version of the Playboy magazine. And that was in 2002. Uh, the second reason, which is more general, is that Bulgaria at the time was a completely different country from what it is at the moment. It was very optimistic. Uh, things for you know, people were looking forward to things that were yet to come, which unfortunately is not the, very much the case at the moment. Uh, it was, as I said, a temporary decision at the time, but I stayed and I started the, the publishing business in 2003, 2004. I started editing magazines, a variety of magazines, and for the past, what, 16, 17 years maybe, my main job has been to to tell the story of Bulgaria to people who do not necessarily speak Bulgarian uh, and people who are interested in one way or another in this country, which, let's face it, is the least known land in Europe, probably outside Albania. Mm -hmm. And uh, for a variety of reasons, because it had been closed off to the rest of the world for such a long time, because the language is difficult and not very many people speak it, uh, for a variety of reasons, Bulgaria remains unknown. And through what I'm doing, I'm trying to, to tell the story in plain English to anybody who is interested to, to, to hear it. I, I wanted, before we move on, just a few words on, on, on Playboy it, itself. I, I'm not sure everyone in Bulgaria has a clear understanding of what Playboy has been in the United States when it started and what it has been all through with the Playboy interviews and, and so on. It's, if I understand correctly, after the um, after Hefner passing away, now Playboy as a magazine doesn't exist anymore. The interviews continue. But why? what I wanted to ask you, because this is very much a part of your understanding of Bulgaria, very much many of your photographs, <coughs> Is the, is the mixing, if I describe it properly, the mixing of uh, low and high culture. And this is, in my mind, exactly what Playboy has so magnificently achieved for a period of time. Um, could, you, could you tell us a bit about, because you said this is a wonderful magazine and I was proud to work for it. 
Could you tell a bit more for an audience that might not know much about Playboy, a few words about what you managed to do in Bulgaria with it? I must tell you that uh, it's not only the girls that don't, don't really know the story of Playboy. A, a lot of people in, in, in the West don't know really the story of Playboy mm. because people imagine when they hear the word Playboy, it's tits and asses, you know, beautiful girls in various stages of undress. But uh, at the time, at least when I was the editor, it wasn't just like this. It was, uh, it was this particular mixture between serious stuff, serious articles. I can, I can name names of, of contributors to, uh, whom we published in Playboy, as well as interviews with major local figures. Um, Please, so please mention, please mention a couple of names. What of, of I know, I know, I know of Martin Luther King, and and I know of uh, um, uh, what was the name of the founder of Apple, uh, whatever. But but in in the Bulgarian context, I don't remember. I've I've read the magazine at the time, but just would you give us a couple of names of those that you interviewed? To, to a foreign audience, I would be very happy to do that. Georgi Luzanov is one of them. He was a regular contributor, Georgi Luzanov. He is an associate professor of uh, media at university, a long time head of the National Electronic yes, Media Council. Dimitri Bokchev, a former colleague from Radio Free Europe of mine. Yes. We have Professor Christian Motanov, who is a professor of history. We have um, Ivan Garelov, a um, veteran journalist. We have a, a lot of other people who, who speak a lot to the local audience. But they're hardly known abroad because they, uh, they, they, were, they were simply working in Bulgaria and they were in Bulgarian. So their job wasn't to make themselves known abroad. In here is, here is uh, let, let's, let's move on because we, we, we are a bit short of time. Um, here is the, the book which basically George Lozanov has also introduced you. Um, this, is, this is a wonderful book where with your photographs you have managed for many of us to describe the current state of Bulgaria. The one thing which I wanted to discuss with you about this book, although it merits maybe an hour or more, um, is the fact that my understanding about the book is that it would be much better understood paradoxically by Bulgarians themselves than by, by non-Bulgarians. You Even in your own preface, you, you do not give the names of the authors who have inspired you to, produce, to make these photographs, and you, 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 not even that, you, you mentioned that the audience would probably know these, these, these authors. But in fact, most of them, if I understood correctly, are Bulgarian authors. So how, how do we overcome this, this kind of contradiction? Because you, you, yourself, you yourself said just a minute ago that you know, bringing Bulgaria to the outside world is a... Is a um, Herculean <laughs> job, but you know this is your this is your most uh, most let's say you know th this is probably the one book apart your apart from your prose where you have really uh, it's your own book in a way, um, and yet I I'm not sure non-Bulgarians would understand it as Bulgarians would. But please comment. Uh, what I I mean, permit me to disagree. Uh, yes, because, please, uh, please, please book, do, please do. This book was quite well received abroad, in Germany, in Denmark, in the US, in England, by people who look at photographs and who were given the chance to look at photographs from a, from a country very few people have visited. Uh, in the preface, I mentioned that I'm not going to disclose the names of uh, uh, writers, poets, artists, etc., because their names would be very, very well known to, to Bulgarians, but would speak nothing at all to people outside of Bulgaria. And there is no need to change that. But this book is, try, is trying to tell the story of Bulgarians within the past 10, 15 years, maybe, the way that I saw them. And sometimes, uh, forgive the, uh, the commonplace, but sometimes uh, in images, very often images speak a lot more, images are a lot more eloquent than words. <clears throat> which is why, excuse me, I prefer to, to do this book with just images and very, very, very few words, except for the preface, of course. No, of course, uh, of course. Because but of course, and, and you are inspired by, by the, the, the similar attempt 
in the US 60 years ago and so on and so forth. But, but l let me just move a step further because this is uh, something that you published five years ago, I think. So uh, com think coming, wasn't it 16? Yeah. Yes. So my, 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 my question would be, coming back to the, the, my introduction, is in these last five years, what type of images or stories would you add to the book if you were to to, to publish it today? What 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 is the what is this you, for the storyteller? The story of the last five years. The uh, the moment I I mean I suppose this is the case with any author, uh, regardless of the medium they work in. But once you get it out of your system, once you write a book and put the final full stop. Uh, once you finish an image, once you finish a symphony or a song or whatever, uh, then it's out. It's out in the whole world. It's not for me to discuss what I've done in the past. It's for the audience to discuss. Uh, in, my, in this particular case, with the Bulgarians, uh, I must admit that I kind of lost interest. Uh, I'm not interested Why? in what I've I don't know. I don't know. So there's but no, there's no, you, you don't have a story of Bulgaria in the future. Uh, I, let's say the crossroads that you describe being being either resolved or of a different nature. You, you, you don't have a further story. Other things about Bulgaria, but not necessarily in, in this type of, of street photography. Understood. Mostly. Let me, because I'm, I'm not sure everyone from our audience would, would know you, which is regrettable. Just very, very quickly to go through those books that are that are really destined to a non-Bulgarian audience. They, of course, Bulgarians should be interested in them, but it takes time. This is this is your book with your two co-authors, uh, whom you've worked with for a long time about uh, the Roman um, heritage in Bulgaria. Uh, this is, in a similar way, a detailed account of of the restoration of the Basilica in, in, in Plovdiv, then uh, two other books, which are The Turks of Bulgaria, which is an extraordinarily interesting uh, narration together with Ottoman history. And of course, you have the similar, uh, similar two books that uh, are, uh, for, relate the, the, Jewish, the, the Jewish history of Bulgaria. Um, and Recently, you've, you've published books on the uh, heritage from communism. Uh, and, and last, I, I just want to, to show the one book which I praise. This is, this is, uh, this is, this is Vienna, which uh, essentially um, is 20 years back, isn't it? Yeah. And, and, and this book is in my mind, both our real and indirect meeting each other, because I, I'm not absolutely sure whether I read the book before I met you, or I met you while you were promoting the book. I, I'm not sure. I, I, I have always been fascinated with your book. Uh, thank you for having written it. My last question would be, because in the same, in the same manner in your, in your resume, you, I don't know if it's a slip or, or whether it was voluntary, really, but you say uh, this is my only literary, literary achievement, but you also say for the time being. So coming back to my main question, which is what are this, the un, un narrated stories of Anthony in his mind, uh, are you thinking of writing other books? You see, uh, the way uh, the road uh, from thinking of doing something and actually doing it can be long and winding. So I don't want to, to predict what's going to come out in. But the you might, you might, time. you might write a book. Um, well, yes, yes. I and, might. And basically, probably... basically, by saying for the time being. You, obviously. Now, tell us just another very two very quick questions. Uh, one is because you, you at some point you've you've mentioned that the story of Vienna was not 
satisfactory to you. Uh, I don't mean having written it, but you, you, you seemed not so happy about being a writer, at least based on, on the experience of Vienna. Would you like to share why or, or we move on? I told you, I told you, I told you already. I mean, once you get something out of your system, at least, at least when I said get something out of my system, I stop thinking about it. I look forward. I mean, I'm forward looking. All and right. I'm looking to the future. All right. I'm looking to last, the last, last, I hope jo joking question. It's a joke. But both here and here, you are without a beard, which is when you were working for Free Europe. Is there any strange. relation of being without a beard? Because you obviously enjoy having a beard. Is there any, no, is there I, no, no, no link to working for Free, for free Europe? No, no, no. I'll, I'll tell you the story. I mean, there was a very strict uh, code, uh, work code, that uh, people were not supposed to have a beard, that people were so supposed to wear spectacles. Ah, well, that's, uh, yeah. uh, in black, that's where you appear. Of course, I'm joking. I mean, to your joking question, I am replying with a joke. <laughs> okay. Okay, good. Good. Thank you. Thank you. Because I, I, it sounds, it, to me, it, it I, 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 this is, I just discovered these pictures in the, in the, in the last few days and it, it was worrying that you would be working for Free Europe and, and respect any code. So thank you very much for being with us and I, and I, I, I really look forward to any, any, any book you, you intend to publish in the future. Thank you, Anthony. And I would like to use the opportunity to thank our team. Of course, the, the person who inspired this um, these interviews is Kalin Manolov. Uh, thank you, Kalin. And uh, uh, Boyko and Vasil Bocevi, without whom I would not be able to have these interviews. And once again, Anthony, all the best. My pleasure. Bye. Bye. Bye.